everyone, welcome to In Depth. I'm Tina Jha. 11th September 2019 marks the 126th anniversary of Swami Vivekananda's historic speech at the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago. On this day in 1893, the great saint delivered a powerful speech at the first parliament of the world's religions in which he spoke about tolerance, religious acceptance and the need to abolish all forms of fanaticism, issues that find relevance even today. Through his speech, Swami Vivekananda introduced Hinduism to the Western world. The religion which he said has taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance. Discarding the idea of religious supremacy, he propagated a message of universal brotherhood. The iconic speech earned Swami Vivekananda a standing ovation for two minutes after his speech and went on to establish him as the greatest figure in the parliament of world religions and India as the mother of religions. Today's In Depth revisits the iconic speech of Swami Vivekananda at the Chicago Convention in 1893. How he became a major force in bringing Hinduism to the status of a major world religion in the late 19th century and the relevance of his thoughts and beliefs in the present times. So let's first listen in to the historic address of Swami Vivekananda at the Convention of Parliament of Religions in Chicago in 1893, one of the most influential speeches ever made in history, which earned him the title of the Messenger of Indian Wisdom. Sisters and brothers of America, it fills my heart with joy unspeakable to rise in response to the warm and cordial welcome which you have given us. I thank you in the name of the most ancient order of monks in the world. I thank you in the name of the mother of religions and I thank you in the name of millions and millions of Hindu people of all classes and sects. My thanks also to some of the speakers on this platform who, referring to the delegates from the Orient, have told you that these men from far off nations may well claim the honour of bearing to different lands the idea of toleration. I am proud to belong to a religion which has taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance. We believe not only in universal toleration, but we accept all religions as true. I am proud to belong to a nation which has sheltered the persecuted and the refugees of all religions and all nations of the earth. I am proud to tell you that we have gathered in our bosom the purest remnant of the Israelites who came to southern India and took refuge with us in the very year in which their holy temple was shattered to pieces by Roman tyranny. I am proud to belong to the religion which has sheltered and is still fostering the remnant of the grand Zoroastrian nation. I will quote to you, brethren, a few lines from a hymn which I remember to have repeated from my earliest boyhood, which is every day repeated by millions of human beings. As the different streams having their sources in different paths which men take through different tendencies, various though they appear, crooked or straight, all lead to thee. The present convention, which is one of the most august assemblies ever held, is in itself a vindication, a declaration to the world of the wonderful doctrine preached in the Gita. Whosoever comes to me, though whatsoever form, I reach him. All men are struggling through paths which in the end lead to me. Sectarianism, bigotry and its horrible descendant, fanaticism, have long possessed this beautiful earth. They have filled the earth with violence, drenched it often and often with human blood, destroyed civilization and sent whole nations to despair. Had it not been for these horrible demons, human society would be far more advanced than it is now. But their time is come and I fervently hope that the bell that tolled this morning in honour of this convention may be the death knell of all fanaticism, of all persecutions with the sword or with the pen 
and of all uncharitable feelings between persons wending their way to the same goal. Swami Vivekanand was the first to present the idea of India to an international audience at the Parliament of Religions back in 1893. His historic speech is widely celebrated as the great Chicago speech of the Hurricane Hindu. A reformer and a saint, his words offer an unending source of inspiration to people from all walks of life. Swami Vivekanand was born Narendra Nath Datta on 12 January 1863. His father Vishwanath Datta was an attorney at the Calcutta High Court. His grandfather Durga Charan Datta was a Sanskrit and Persian scholar who left his family and became a monk when he was 25. His mother Bhuvneshwari Devi was a devout housewife. Fondly known as Narendra, Vivekanand was deeply inspired by his parents who shaped much of his personality and thought process. As a young boy, Narendra displayed sharp intellect. He acquired his preliminary education from Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar's Metropolitan Institution before attaining his graduation degree in Arts from the Presidency College, Calcutta. By the time Narendra completed his graduation in 1884, he had mastered Western philosophy and logic an avid reader of various subjects including religion, history, social science, art and literature. He also had profound interest in Puranas, Vedas and Upanishads. In his early 20s, he had begun to question the orthodox beliefs of Hinduism. He also studied Indian classical music and regularly took part in sports activities. Swamiji's life is very difficult to explain in a few words, he was a multifaceted personality. He was an extraordinary genius. He could have made a mark in any field of his choice. He chose uh, religion and spirituality and that is how he made an extraordinary contribution to this uh, field. Of course, from a very young age, the great traits of sacrifice and service were very visible in his life. So as he grew up, these assumed huge monumental proportions in his life. He could serve to any length, even to the point of sacrificing his own life. That was his nature. At the threshold of youth, Narendra passed through a spiritual crisis when he was assailed by doubts about the existence of God. In November 1881, he met Ramakrishna Paramhans, who was staying at the Kali temple in Dakshineshwar. On meeting Paramhans, Narendra asked him, Have you seen God? Although Ramakrishna did not convince Narendra completely at the first go, he won him over his selfless, unconditional love. Gradually, Narendra became a frequent visitor to Dakshineshwar and under the guidance of Paramhans, made rapid strides on the spiritual path. The tragic death of his father led Narendra to get closer to Ramakrishna Paramhans, who by then had helped Narendra move out of his spiritual crisis, so much so that he was ready to renounce everything in order to realize God. Following the death of Ramakrishna Paramhans, Narendra became the leader of a new monastic order that highlighted the importance of service to man as the most effective form of worship of God. In 1887, Narendra took the formal vows of sannyas and came to be known as Swami Vivekananda. In 1888, to spread the message of Ramakrishna to the world, Swami Vivekananda resolved to embark on a journey extensively exploring India in the initial years. He walked on foot, lived in arms and led a life of a wandering monk. It was during his exploration of the country that he was exposed to the abysmal poverty and backwardness among the masses. He became the first religious leader to claim the neglect of the masses as the major reason for the country's breakdown. In 1893, Swami Vivekanand took part in the world's parliament of religions in Chicago. 
His speeches there made him famous as an orator by divine right and a messenger of Indian wisdom to the Western world. For three years, he spread the Vedanta philosophy and religion in America and England and then returned to India. On 1st May 1897, he founded the Ramakrishna Math and Mission and in 1898 established the Belur Math. In June 1899, Swami Vivekanand embarked on a second visit to the West. He returned to Belur Math in December 1900. On 4 July 1902, Swami Vivekanand breathed his last at Belur Math, leaving behind an immortal legacy, not just in the hearts of his contemporaries, but for generations to come. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. 19th century was a period of religious and social renaissance in India. Under the influence of Western education, people began to logically confront social traditions, religion, as well as customs that were prevailing. Swami Vivekananda's role that time was very significant and special. In our next report, let's take a look at his spiritual journey. Arise, awake, and do not stop until the goal is reached. This most famous quote by Swami Vivekananda encapsulates his ideas on social change. For Vivekananda, this is not merely superficial. He appealed for social reformation and engaged in it over his entire lifetime. Swami Vivekananda had deep faith in India's spiritual power. His spirituality is the realization of the complete and ubiquitous spirit this is the reason his social reform is based on spirituality. He believed it is important to first bring spiritual reforms. He viewed social reform as very important, but also believed that it should not be merely superficial or incomplete. He felt complete reform, on the other hand, will be meaningful and long-lasting. Vivekananda considered the lack of willpower responsible for the plight of the Indian society. He said, unless people themselves come forward to solve their problems, there will not be any improvement. Vivekananda strongly believed that a social reformer should have deep sympathy for the society, which alone helped him to understand the pain of millions of people immersed in poverty and ignorance. He also said that when the youth of the country sacrifice their comforts for their countrymen, India will rise once again. Swami Vivekananda considered ideological change a prerequisite for social change. He connected social salvation to self-salvation. He wanted to bring about a comprehensive change in India by accelerating the pace of social change. Here, he considered the role of body, mind and soul important. But he trusted the soul the most. This is what made him different from others. According to Swami Vivekananda, the transformation of any one class or community will not change the whole country. Until all people work in this direction, the change will remain incomplete. He tried to evoke youth, women, poor people, workers and peasants. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time for a short break on the program, but when we return, we talk about the relevance of Swami Vivekananda's thoughts and teachings in the present times. Do stay with us. Watch The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira, at 9.30 p.m. Sen, an outstanding and extraordinary saltwater swimmer of India. He's the first Asian to swim the English Channel way back in 1958. And just eight years later, in 1966, he swam the seven seas 
of the five continents in one calendar year, which etched his name in the Guinness Book of World Records. In 1959, he was also conferred the Padma Shri, and in 1967, he was awarded the Padma Bhushan. Welcome back, you're watching In Depth. Swami Vivekanand is the forerunner among contemporary Indian philosophers. To understand his personality, it is also important to know his philosophy in life. Let's look at the beliefs associated with the great saint. The biggest influence on Swami Vivekanand's ideology were the ancient Indian philosophies, especially Vedanta philosophy. The imprint of Buddhist philosophy is also evident in his thinking. Through the Brahmo Samaj, he countered superstition and orthodox ill practices. The teachings of the Bhagavad Gita also had a deep impact on his thinking. Above was the influence his teacher, Swami Ramakrishna Paramhans had on his life. Paramhans taught him the need for spiritual discipline and thinking. Vivekananda's philosophy hence can be described as a spiritual inquiry. He believed spirituality is the only truth. Vivekanand not only believed in the singularity of truth, but also acknowledged the various paths to reach it. He also had a deep belief in God. According to him, it is impossible for us to accept the truth of the spirit and the universe and deny the truth of God. The basis of this thought is the unity that pervades everything. Vivekanand believed it is possible to experience God. Why there is a difference? Why we differ? He illustrated through a very beautiful story. A story of the frog in the well. A frog was in a well and one day by accident, another frog from sea fell into that well. So the frog of the well asked him, who are you? You are a stranger. And then the other frog said, I am from sea. How big is a sea? Is it as big as my fell? So it was arguing. Finally he said, you are a liar, you get out. There can be nothing better than my well. So Swamiji, when he narrated this, the whole audience burst into laughter. He said, that exactly is our problem. The Hindu sits in his own little well and thinks that the whole world is his well. Similarly, the Christian sits in his well and thinks that that's the entire world. So also the Mormon. So he said, unless we really know about other religions, unless we have the willingness to learn and sit with others and know about the religion, there can never be any idea of harmony. Vivekanand connected the permanence of the external world to the permanence of the internal world, which is the soul. Vivekanand described immortality as the uniqueness of the soul that starts with rebirth and ends in liberation from rebirth. Religion played a major role in Vivekanand's ideas. To Vivekanand, religion was not only talk or doctrine or theory, but realization of the best and strongest powers within oneself. Vivekanand said that not accepting and tolerating other religions was the greatest misfortune of the world. He advocated a religion of universal oneness and cosmopolitanism. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. In a short life spanning just 39 years, Swami Vivekanand, through his teachings, continues to guide generations even today. Back then, he spoke about reforms to overcome the social, political, as well as economic challenges that we are facing today as well. His thoughts and principles remain relevant even in the present times. Swami Vivekanand challenged every social evil that was prevalent in his time. His ideas that counter-orthodoxy, superstition and societal malpractices are relevant even today. Vivekanand's thoughts on dealing with poverty and the poor are an illuminating comment on social justice. He said, and I quote, Look upon every man, woman and everyone as God. You cannot help anyone, you can only serve. Serve the children of the Lord, 
serve the Lord himself, if you have the privilege. He also said, So long as millions live in hunger and ignorance, I hold every person a traitor, who, having been educated at their expense, pays not the least heed to them. Swami Vivekananda also stressed on the need to promote education, which he believed should be directed towards moral and character building of a person and not just provide bookish knowledge. He thought it was a pity that the existing system of education did not boost a person's self-confidence and self-respect. Swami Vivekananda's thoughts on education are timeless and as relevant today as they were in the late 19th century. Some kind of an oneness, some kind of an extraordinary spiritual experience it was. So all of them completely forgot themselves, felt one with him. And that is how he could conquer the entire audience. The speech was historic in many senses because never before a religious leader had got up from a platform and spoken, had spoken about the harmony of religions. In fact, it is said that the parliament was organized essentially to prove the superiority of Christianity over other religions. But here is a person coming from India, an unheard, un, unheard of country of uh, snake charmers and etc. He came and simply conquered the whole world. So he said, he not only spoke about tolerance, he spoke about acceptance. Previously, the world had known that we should tolerate others. We should tolerate other religions. But he openly declared that we not only believe in tolerance, we believe in complete acceptance. We believe every religion as equally true. So this was something extraordinary. Vivekananda believed that women empowerment was the key to empower a society. He advocated education of women, saying it was the lack of education that makes them dependent. He repeatedly said, India will not progress as long it keeps neglecting its women. His thoughts on women's emancipation still resound with the society. Swami Vivekananda also had immense faith in the power of youth. He appealed to them to come forward for the development of the nation and the society. Swami Vivekananda was not just a saint, but a great patriot, an articulate speaker, thinker and a writer with boundless love for humanity. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. So that's it from us today in depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a comprehensive view on some other subject. Just in case you missed the television broadcast, you can also watch our program online on YouTube and Twitter. And remember, you can also send your suggestions and feedback about the program. Thank you very much for your time.